I am at Abel Pines Campgrounds, which is right across from the, the other campground that I was at yesterday behind that little store. And I mean, I've done laundry. I don't need to use their bathrooms for shower. So I came across the street and for $12, because I'm not a main resident, I rented a campsite. Again, I'm spending one more day in the woods to avoid some weather on <clears throat> Katahdin. So, but this is what I got for $12. I mean, I just cannot believe that I got this. So there's the prime seat, fire pit, a couple grates. I actually might go get some hot dogs and grill them. Picnic table, somewhere you can dry your sleeping bag and hang things. An entire shelter, but it's like a mini shelter. Like you have on the AT. So this is so cool. I'm not even going to use a shelter. <clears throat> I like my tent. I don't like sleeping in the shelters, but I love step, stopping at them. But that's the, my tent. I think that is a perfect pitch. I mean, I was able to. It's flat enough and clear enough. And I think this is the first time I've ever done that. Done the old perfect pitch. Look at that. The rain flies in the back. Straight out. A little bit of pull on that side string right here. Right, This string right here keeps your head from touching the inside of the tent. It gives you a little bit more headroom. So it stretches out both side walls. Um, so that's kind of a cool feature of this CPAX duplex tent. And that's it. So I'm going to chill here for the rest of the day. Look for some, oh, and, and it's right on this river. There's a couple other campers over there. And uh, Katahdin's right over my right shoulder, which is socked in with clouds. Man, I hope this plan works and I can have a nice summit on Monday. Um, in a partly cloudy situation. I mean, look how cool that is. How much do you love that? $12. $12. And then I'm sure I'll be hiking by, you know, four o'clock tomorrow morning. I'm sure I'll be hiking by 4.30 at the very latest. I'm super excited to finish this journey, so. That's it, ooh, look. Water and a bag full of chocolate chip cookies. I know they won't be like Gales, but <clears throat> but they'll have to do till I get back home. So, all right, I'm gonna start looking for some wood over and out. So this is Katahdin this morning, my waiting day, and it's just covered in clouds. And it pretty much sits like this all day long, and it's really rare that it opens up. So it'll be like this for hours and hours. I was in here yesterday in the same section with the same right here with the clouds. And their claws are moving around, but it just it just stays that way. It's the oddest thing in the world. And it's a little bit windy here, and um, a little bit colder. So, well, this is what the Abel Bridge store looks like at quarter to five in the morning. I imagine it, it looks like ooh, there's a car coming. Wow, so exciting. So I'm just leaving the campgrounds, going to walk to the kiosk, sign in for the birches, walk 10 miles back, and then set up a tent. I'll show you anything cool on the way. This is Katahdin Stream. This is the entrance to the uh, Baxter State Park. I thought if I was ever going to be a see a moose, it'd be in this bog right here. There's um mountains right there are just the right way right hand side of Katahdin and it's of course in clouds cool beaver dam right there little bridge back to state boundary and then this is the kiosk that all northbound <clears throat> hikers have to sign up at for to stay at the Birches, which is a free campsite for us. And I just have to see where to sign up. That's what the kiosk looks like. 
right there. You can give you a little place to sit. I guess there's something to fill out, I'm sure. And then, I guess sign, trail register. Oh, there we go. And you, I guess you just sign up. So let me get my glasses out and make sure that there's room at the inn. This is the trail for now, still going back to Katahdin. I was thinking about um, the southbound, or just go southbound. I bet you Katahdin takes a lot of people out. A lot. I wonder what the percentage is. Because if you're, you know, maybe an in inexperienced backpacker, and then you go up and do that tent, that crazy, you know, you go up a 6,000 footer, probably for the first time, and then come back down. If you get out of that with no injury and a good attitude, then you'll probably go to the next part. Then you gotta hike, hike out of there to uh, Abel Bridge and go through the 100 mile. Now, if you can make it through the 100 mile wilderness, a good cross section of the AT, it's got a little bit of everything built in there. So if you, and I've seen, saw a lot of people bail at Shaw's. So if you can make it past Shaw's, that shows some pretty good commitment. And then if you can make it all the way to the canoe crossing, I mean, I feel like by then you've seen, you've gone over a 4,000 footer, you've been on trail for a little while, you've probably been rained on, and uh, you got have a pretty good chance of going all the way. Those are my thoughts. Oh, and anybody, I think if anybody's thinking about doing the Appalachian Trail and has a chance, you know, this is all cost money to get back and forth. But to hike the 100 mile wilderness, it's a great cross section of the AT. Or if you don't want to hike the AT at all, if you want like a full immersion experience, like a little bit of everything, all the camping and lean to situations and fording and water and climbs, flats, roots, rocks, flats. I mean, the 100 mile wilderness would be a perfect trail to just do a one and done. You know, do 10 miles a day, eight, 10 miles a day, take 10 days to get through there, get a food drop in the middle, perfect hike. Pick the right time of year. So, okay, on I go. That's a pretty one. I think uh, you get the same effect from a car wash, really. Get the rushing water, turbulent, foamy, noisy. Yeah. You want the same experience and you're stuck in the city, go clean your car. Okay, this one may be better than a car wash. That's a pretty massive falls. I think that's the biggest one I've seen. Nah, the Kennebunk, Kennebunk, Bunk uh, Bunk River. That falls is pretty big, but this is pretty good. Oh, and I should be able to use the old Atch Appalachian Trail for a couple years. So when I hear, you're fat, you're lazy, you never do anything around here. I can just say, I hiked the Appalachian Trail. 
So, <laughs> that's plenty. wonder if this guy and his wife is watching this video. I met this guy through the 100 mile wilderness. He started with a buddy, six months of planning, all the gear. I guess his buddy fell out after the first day or two and uh, was laying on his back like a turtle saying he couldn't move. Had to be extracted off one of the few gravel roads that go through the 100 mile. So this guy wound up hiking, you know, alone. And uh, we just wound up talking and had a similar pace. Stayed at a few shelters, I think three. You know, these are all, these are all 13 to 15 miles apart. So, um, but anyway, sort of made friends with him. His wife picked him up at the camp spot, Shira Fresh Strawberries, made strawberry bars and shared them with all the northbound through hikers, which I thought was incredibly nice. Super nice couple from Portland, Maine. Really smart and super friendly. Happy to have met them. And it's funny how fast you can make friends on a trail. Because that's what you want. Peace. This is the Birches and Baxter State Park up here in Maine. And this is specifically reserved for northbound hikers. There's a $10 fee, but you can just walk in. Um, all the other reservations here at Baxter, you have to make months, months in advance. So um, I'm going to set up right here. I happen to be first one here, and there's a platform, and there's not many spots at all believe it or not here like almost none so I'm gonna take up that whole thing there's my suitcase there's my there's my car right there oh, oops I had a crash and then what the inside of the shelters look like they're pretty small and this is the view if you want to stay in the shelter and then there's a second shelter right here Birches capacity 12 on the site, so wow. So, if you're not one of the 12, that means you're hiking back out of Baxter and um, trying to get in the next day. So, that's crazy. Once it gets busy, here's the other shelter the inside. Got a room in there, and there's pretty that's an okay stealth spot, but I'll be honest with you. I mean, that looks like a big P spot, P spot, P spot, P spot. You know what I mean? I don't want to pitch my tent here, really. P spot, P spot. I hate to bring up the reality of all this. P spot. So I'm definitely going to go on the city-fied um, well, Let's walk this way. The city five platform, shingles on the roofs, moss growing on shingles, picking cable. That's cool. Fire pit. You know I'm gonna be gathering. Good. Well, I'm gonna gather wood the rest of the day for a fire tonight. Hundred percent. That'll give me something to do. It's only quarter after ten. Home sweet home. I'll show it to you when it's ten. That's how you pitch on a platform. I rarely do it. I think this is the third time I've done it, but there's not a lot of great places because the flat spots look like they'd be right in the middle of everything. So I took this only platform and that's how you pitch on a platform. That's how I pitch on a platform. I actually use my um, round spikes like nails naturally because I'm 
Couldn't build it for 40 years. So that's all I do is just pound them right in there. Boom. Bang. And you just lay your round sheet sort of as a guide uh, right on a board. And then just put your stakes equal, equal off all four corners, both directions. And then you wind up with this perfect pitch on a platform. So simple. I've seen people use rocks and tie their guidelines to rocks and all kinds of crazy stuff to pitch. And uh, I think it's pretty much that simple. I've got the sleeping bag airing out. I'll just let it sit there all day. I did notice this Birch's campsite is way away from all the other campers in this park. They've got the, the dirty, smelly hiker trash like way back down the gravel road, away from the normal people. The people who still smell good and have eyeliner on and clean shoes. I'm leaving the birches. It's 4.30 a.m. I want to be on trail by 5 a.m. See, that's kind of... This is the ranger station at Baxter State Park. That's the ranger's cabin. You can even see that he's got a little fire started this morning. And I mean, the gamble that I made, staying one extra day in the woods um, to delay the summit to July 5th, it looks like it's gonna pay off because I see blue sky and pink clouds. I'm so happy. Look at that. I'm so incredibly happy. I hope it's like that at the top. I mean, usually it sucks in at the top, but man, hope this gamble pays off. Look at how pretty. Summit day, July 5th, 2021. This is where we get the water. This water is so clean and clear. Look at that brook, freezing cold. The bottom's not staying at all. It's just all clean rocks. Look at how nice that is. All right, here we go. I am nervous, excited, happy, and sad all at the same time. Grateful. I signed the register at the beginning of the trail. <clears throat> Start time, 5 a.m., which is kind of cool. I also signed the uh, register at the beginning of the park at the kiosk. I signed that one at 5 a.m. too, which I thought was going to be cool. But anyway, <clears throat> this is the trail so far, which is kind of funny. It's funny. The trail is going to look like this in a little while. It's like, yeah, come on up. Come on up to the top. It's gonna it's just just like this all the way. No problems here. Nobody's looking. All right. I will show you something's cool. Just one more thing I thought about is you try to think about this whole hike and the experience and and I it'll probably take me the rest of my life to process actually take a long time to process this one but that's cool i think that's the cool part about it why did you go on the appalachian trail i don't know why let the fun begin Some nice stair work right here. This is the not steep part. I'll just 
film that. If you're a fast reader, then you'll get it. And if not, you can always hit pause for a second and research it. So, been coming up from that way, going up this way, the climb is getting a little bit steeper. Let's just say Baxter Peak. 5,200. I thought it was a 6,000, but whatever. Four miles. So it's four miles to the summit. Wow. Four mile intense climb. Hey, you know what? It's okay today. Oh, and this is going to be no ordinary climb, as you'll see. I'm going to get water down here, I think. I think it's the last chance to get water. So I'm gonna drink like a camel. I'm gonna camel up and then fill, I'll go up there with like two and a half liters. It'd be funny. I'm so hydrated, it's not funny. Wow, look at that. Beautiful. And this water is just crystal, crystal, like a bluish green. I mean, a, like a bluish clear. Look how clear that is. This is the trail now. Um, I, I learned a couple things about nutrition. Is that when you burn all your body, body fat, I know I keep bringing this up, you can't do these climbs without really getting tired and your legs burning. I have been eating as much food as I can, possibly can, the last two days. And uh, I feel pretty good. I mean, I think I've eaten enough to do this climb without a big, uh, without suffering too much. So, learn something new every day. They do give you nice things to look at on the way up, that's for sure. That's that stream we've been getting the water out of. Look at this, I found one of those purple pine cones that the, the squirrels have been loving. I would imagine there's not a lot of purple ones around. I'm gonna get the rest of it. Maybe some squirrel will eat it. Look at how pretty that is though. Look at how pretty. Purple pine cones. I'm telling you, these things are rare. I'm on this crazy climb. That's below me. Here comes another hiker up behind. And that is what's above us still after already risking life and limb. So, here you go, a couple hikers in. Bright green, they just disappeared. There's a guy to the left, but I'm going to try to show you a scale. Oh, that's a nice view actually. Burning that ridge. We just ran that ridge. And then going up this, you know, 20 stories, I guess. Up through there. So for scale, the guys in the orange are all the way down there. Don't know if you can see that. Can't zoom any closer than that. 
And we ran this ridge line. And then here we are. As we came up, running that ridge. And then down all the way there into the valley. And you just have this. I've been boulder climbing for at least two and a half hours. So. Sometimes it's worth it to fold or climb for that long. Shoot. There's that blade. Now to get to the summit, we have to go here. Got to go all the way across this ridge back here. And then you go all the way up to the top and then you go travel all the way to the very top all the way over to the right hand corner that's the summit way up there to the right this is a pretty cool part there's just rocks strewn everywhere and you just come up on these views that's just incredible this crazy view it just goes off into this big flipping rocks mammoth rock slide side holy shit look at that there it is man I can see the sign I can see the sign oh my god <laughs> That's the sign. Congratulations! Thank you. Thank you. There it is. <laughs> A little bit more emotional than I thought. <laughs> See a grown man cry. <sighs> this is the big Karen. It's on top of Katah. No, there's a bird flying by. Right? Oh, a little bit below. Oh, that's cool. He just landed right there. But anyway, and then this is Knife's Edge, which is really cool. So, I mean, if. So, Knife's Edge goes. These people are just starting it here, but it goes um, across here, down this Knife's Edge across there and then all the way there. I don't know if you can see the people on that summit right there. But there you go. This is basically the precipice. We start going back down. These people are going over the edge and I'm gonna follow them. Hope one guy's coming up. edge good luck yeah. enjoy the nice yeah. day yeah. how about this crazy isn't it oh, shit, almost, almost fell off the mountain what I'm standing on I mean it's like a sheer drop off that way straight down here's my feet again it's a sheer drop down that way it's a sheer drop down that way oh I just left go all the way down there and I don't know if you can see the height okay okay I keep saying this over and over and I don't have a big screen, but I think there's some hikers down there making their way across. And that'll be me in about maybe 20 minutes. And then this guy, I can barely see his head. Okay, bye. Well, that's about it, folks. The hike is over, officially over. 
I'm sitting here at Baxter State Park. I'm waiting for a shuttle to go to the AT Lodge in Millinocket. I'll stay there tonight, take a shower, do the necessary laundry, go eat until I fall asleep. And then um, tomorrow morning at 9.30, they shuttle you over to the bus station. And then um, there's a bus that goes to Bangor. <laughs> Once I'm there, I'll look at flights the last minute. I'll see if I can get out the same day or the next day or whatever. And if I can't get out, I'll get a hotel and then get out the next day. So that is the exit strategy. For anybody who's interested or for any of the gear nerds, I will do a, a gear review. Like after I, you know, a couple days after I recoup a little bit at home, I'll do a, a gear review. I'll just unpack my um, pack and sort of tell you what's in it. So, well, thanks for watching been a wild ride.